Hi, this is John with The Evolving World. Today I'm doing a video on aligning a Fiat 500e without having to spend $200 on an alignment. Um, you can actually do it for much less money, basically free. All you're going to need is this right here, a block and some string. And what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a, a thrust alignment. But we're going to put the block by the back wheel here, and then we're going to run the string along the car to the front wheel. And that's going to determine what our alignment is. So the first thing you're going to have to do is make sure that the steering wheel is straight. Now this car has no problem. I mean, when I, when I drive down the road, the steering wheel is perfectly straight. So I don't, it's not like it's, you know, slanted or anything. So, so we want to make sure that it is as it is when it drives. So, so in this case, it's straight. So we'll just uh, get it pretty close. It doesn't have to be perfect. Well, preferably it is perfect, but you know. So I had to look at this about four times now to get it right because there's so many different factors going on here. So, you know, the, the wheel, for example, is five and a half inches in the front. And then the back wheel is like six and a half inches wide in the back. So the tire is the same size, but the tire rests on the wheel differently. So there's different dimensions from the tire to the wheel. The track is different in the front than it is in the back. It's 55.4 in the front, 55 in the back. So when you add it all up and spit it out, basically what happens is we run our string, try to get it as center to the, uh, close to the center cap as you can for more accurate measurement. Mine's running just below the center cap in the back, the black center cap right there. Just make sure that it's consistent. So like on here, we're going to do the same thing, just below the center cap. Pull the string tight, and that's from the front, from the back of the rear wheel to the front of the front wheel or tire. You want to pull it tight to the tire. And basically, if you want this thing to be driving down the road straight, it should be basically resting equally on all four spots right here. However, the car comes in spec back there with the uh, the front part of the rear wheel is actually positive toe so that means that the toe is actually in a little bit so it's, a, it's by, by spec it's 0.25 degrees which works out to be about a sixteenth of an inch or maybe about two millimeters so there should be a gap right there in the front Right where that's uh, the front part of that, you know, not not where it's making contact, but right there in the front part of the of the rear wheel, that should be a sixteenth of an inch per spec. So that's the numbers you're looking for. Touching the back, touching in the front, slightest little gap here, which in this particular case, it's out of alignment because it's not. There's a bigger gap there. It's probably about a sixteenth of an inch. I don't know if you can see that or not. That's a bigger gap than it should be. It should be virtually touching. And then there should be a sixteenth of an inch gap back there, which is about what it looks like it is right now. Okay, next up you're going to need three wrenches. You're going to need an 11 millimeter, a 17 millimeter, and an adjustable wrench. Because I don't have the size that this is. It looks like it's maybe possibly a 19 or a 20 millimeter. Not sure. I don't have any wrenches that go that size, unfortunately. But that's a nice thing about a adjustable wrenches you can get any size you want so these three wrenches right here should do the job and so another nice thing about this car you don't have or about this whole procedure is you don't even have to have a lift or anything all you have to do is turn the steering wheel and you get all the access you need right here you don't have to lift the car you don't have to do anything we try to get the camera in here oh man it's tight but anyway uh so we're going to adjust that right there Oops, that right there. And um, since this is on the back of the wheels, we're going to want to lengthen it slightly. So the best procedure is to use two wrenches, just as shown right here. You want to keep the tie rod end stable. You don't want to, like, move it out of its little uh, joint section here. There's, like, there's like a, you know, a rubber joint down here, which I can't. Ah, let me show you down here. Hopefully that shows it. So you want to keep that, so in this case it's the 17 millimeter, this one right here. You want to keep this one stable. 
You use your two wrenches and you grab them both at the same time and kind of pull against each other. And so this one will come free. So I've already loosened it now. It's not that loose, but yeah, it's a little tricky. You probably want to use some WD-42 also right here to help loosen it up. Let it sit for 10 minutes or something. Although this car doesn't have very much stuff. It actually looks pretty new. It's not too bad. But uh, yeah, so you just want to loosen that up a little bit. And then we'll start turning it. Won't need this anymore except for when we uh, tighten it back up again. But we should be able to take our 11 millimeter right here and just start turning it as we need to. Okay, so I just marked this one right here. I put a little ink mark on the top of it here so so we can track how, what we're doing here. So we want to, since, since it's toe out, meaning the fronts are out, we're going to want to, and this is located in the back of the wheel, we're going to want to extend this out. So we're going to want to make this thing push outwards a little bit. Probably, I guess we'll experiment and see how many turns it takes, but I mean, it's a good idea to mark it, that way we know where our starting point is at. I'll probably do a full revolution and go on the other side, do a full revolution, and then just kind of, without lock, without having to tighten the lock nut here, we can kind of just, we can center the wheel again and we'll take another measurement and see how close we are. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll, we'll lock the, uh, we'll tighten up the lock nut to secure it. But for now, we'll just leave it all nice and loose. We'll just turn this maybe one full turn to the left to loosen, to pull, push it away from the tie rod end. Should be able to just get in here and do that. We use our marker right there, so that's why we got the marker on there. We know exactly when it's one full revolution. So yeah, we'll try that for now, and then we'll do the other side. Okay, on the left side here, uh, the better technique was to brace the tie rod end with the 17 millimeter down on some blocking, and then just push this push this this wrench up here down. And so it's it's uh, it's like the other one. It's left to loosen, right to tighten. So that's that's good that it's consistent like that. I know in some turnbuckle type suspensions, I mean sometimes they'll have like it will be reverse threaded and stuff. But this one's fortunately it's all left. So that's a good good news. So that way you're not tightening the wrong way or anything. So it's left to loosen, right to tighten. So yeah. So I've already marked it. Now we'll just turn it one full revolution and then kind of re reset everything and see what we got. So here it is, perfectly aligned. This is what you're going to want to see right here. You're going to want this string so it's basically not, about as close as you can get to touching without touching. That's what you're going to want. Right there. Both sides should be equal. And then, as I stated before, the front of the back tire, front part of the back tire, or the rear tire, should be about a sixteenth of an inch for it to be within spec. Although I'm a little bit um, hesitant to... Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it should be zeroed out, in my opinion. Because if it was, then everything would be aligned perfect and everything, the car would actually go down the road straight. Because anytime you have a little bit of toe in, or positive toe, as this car has, positive toe or toe in, you're going to get this kind of... Uh, it's not going to be the most stable car in the world. You're gonna get a little bit of a little bit of four-wheel steering effect going on. So I'm not sure why they do this. Maybe it's just to create a little bit of drama. It is an Italian car, right? So it has to be a little bit of drama. What would it be without that? But anyway, we'll we'll leave it as is. And um, there's some other issues with the rear suspension, though, as far as the camber being out of alignment. I'm gonna go ahead and cover that in another video where we adjust the rear suspension. Of course, it's not adjustable, but we can still adjust it anyway. And we're gonna do that on the next video. But anyway, this one's all aligned, looking great. And especially on a car like this, it makes sense because the only thing that you can adjust is the toe. So it's kind of like, why bother to pay somebody, you know? I mean, a computerized alignment's not gonna do anything better. I mean, they're gonna do the same thing that I just did, you know, and that you can do. It's very simple. Very easy to do. Doesn't take any time. You can obviously fine tune it anytime you want. So it's like, you know, it only takes like 10, 15 minutes once you get once you get the hang of it. So it's definitely a definitely a comfortable place to be. 
So uh, anyway, hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe. Many more videos to come.